Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over uh, one thing really quick here, and this is a, another measure of oxygenation, and this is something known as the PF ratio, the PF um, uh, ratio, and to get at the PF ratio, I simply look at the patient's P little a O2 in millimeters of mercury and divide that by the FiO2, the fraction of inspired oxygen that the patient's on. Um, now I need to be very careful that um, I use the FiO2 as its proper fraction. So if I have somebody on, uh, let's say they're on a ventilator or whatnot, and they're on 50% oxygen, I need to make sure that when I do the PF ratio, I write that as 0 0.5. Is a, is a proper uh, a fraction, if you will, a prop, proper decimal. Um, so let's just go ahead and work through one really quick. Uh, so let's just say that our patient's uh, P little AO2 is 100 um, millimeters of mercury, and we measure this on room air. So they're on 21% oxygen, or remember I have to convert that to its proper fraction, 0. 0.21. So I simply take 100 and then I divide 100 by 0 0.21. So it's simply 100 divided by 100 divided by 0 0.21, 21% down here. And I will write the answer over here. And that gives me about 470. Six. Okay, that gives me a ratio of 476. And let's just talk about what our, uh, generally speaking, what our normal normal ratios are. So normally, um, you want a, a PF ratio of about 300 and up. Okay, 300 and up is is generally considered normal. Um, clearly, this is 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 very high. This is good. This is normal. This is saying that room air, somebody breathing room air is able to have a, 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 a PaO2 of 100 millimeters of mercury. That means that oxygen is as readily and easily diffusing uh, from the alveoli into the um, blood. And uh, you're easily able to diffuse that, and that's an indication of how well the respiratory system is working in, in, that, in that sense. Now, if my PF ratios are a little lower, let's say between the 200 oh, to around 300 range, um, some people may even go 150, we'll say. They may go to one between 150 and 300, just depending on who you're talking to. This indicates that there, there's some sort of problem. Something is preventing um, that you are having to give um, large, P, uh, large um, FiO2s and you're only getting modest PaO2s. Um, and you know something's going on. There's some sort of problem that's preventing the proper uh, movement of of oxygen uh, from the alveoli into the blood. And so what we can say is that we we might want to consider the possibility of something known as an ALI or an acute lung injury. Is there some sort of acute lung injury or some sort of pathology um, that's uh, you know, preventing normal uh, diffusion of gas? And certainly, if my PF ratio is less than 150. Less than 150 indicates that there is a very serious problem that's occurring. Um, and, it, 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 and that problem is impairing um, the ability for us to adequately exchange gas at the alveolar level. And that may include things like ARDS, you know, where I may have uh, acute or adult respiratory distress syndrome or IRDS, infant uh, respiratory distress syndrome, or some sort of severe uh, form of pulmonary insult or pulmonary embarrassment. Um, and you can see a normal, you can have very low PF ratios with what, what would we would consider a normal PaO2. Let's say that my patient's PaO2 um, is uh, 150, okay? So that's actually high. If you were just to look at that PaO2 on face value, that would be high. But let's say that your patient's on a ventilator and they are on 100% oxygen. Um, so that's uh, a 1, right? 100% is 1. Well, that equals 150. What that's telling me is that I have to give my patient 100% oxygen to get their PaO2 up to 150. You know, that, that is a significant issue going on. So a PF ratio is, is a good test you can do uh, to kind of get over these face value numbers where you look um, at your PaO2s and you go, well, it doesn't look too bad. 
and then you actually do the PF ratio and you'll go, oh wow, okay, something is going on here. Okay guys, um, that's all I'm going to do on PF ratios, just talk about how to calculate it, and when you get into mechanical ventilation this summer, um, you're going to learn more about how um, it fits into the, the greater uh, picture, the bigger picture, and how it's one of the things that can be used when determining um, if you're going to want to wean somebody or extubate them or not. Okay, as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.